Monsieur le Président de la Banque Centrale Européenne, cher Mario Draghi. President of the European Central Bank, dear Mario Draghi, uh, President of the Republic, uh, Madame Chancellor, dear Angela, uh, Madame President-elect of the European Commission, Madame President-designate of the European Central Bank, dear Christine, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners, ministers and governors, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Si nous sommes si nombreux, if there are so many of us around you in Frankfurt today, dear Mario, it is not only to hail a well-conducted mandate as President of the European Central Bank. What brings us together today goes well beyond monetary policy. I will leave to others who are better qualified than I am the task of analyzing and of extending the immense legacy you leave in that regard. What we are celebrating above all today is the record of a man who held the European dream very high and who held it in this institution which demonstrated during the financial crisis, and I am uh, speaking here in front of your predecessor and in front of your successor, its solidity and its robustness. A man who has been through his speeches and decisions worthy heir of the founding fathers of Europe. This filiation demand places you in the footsteps of Jean Monnet, of Robert Schumann, of Conrad Adenauer, and your illustrious countrymen, Alcide de Gasperi and Altiero Spinelli. In Milan, a few weeks ago, you delivered one of those speeches that punctuated your mandate and which are now written in the stones which are building Europe. As the students of the Catholic University were honoring you with an award, you mentioned three qualities that make a good policymaker knowledge, courage, and humility. Dear Mario, you honor and you've embodied those qualities here. You acquired and conquered knowledge through exceptional academic education and professional experience. You enhanced it constantly through exchanges with the most brilliant economic minds, and you transmitted it through your teachings and conferences. That expertise, acknowledged by all, was decisive to establish your intellectual authority among your peers, the market observers, as they called, and well beyond. Courage and even boldness are what you often required over the last eight years. Thrown into the euro area sovereign debt crisis as soon as you took office, you led an action supported by the ECB teams, uh, that many of whom are here today to show their regard, that was decisive to save Europe from sinking. History will, of course, remember, and Madame Chancellor was also uh, mentioning this uh, sentence a few minutes ago, uh, we'll remember the 26th of July 2012 where you asserted the ECB's determination to do anything in its power to save the euro, whatever it takes. Three words, three words that decreed without much strength as simplicity the irreversibility of the euro in the face of markets believed to be uncontrollable. Then, throughout your tenure, you took no less daring decisions to stimulate credit growth or to prevent the deflation risk in the euro area. Your courage is also measured with the vast European ambition that you never ceased to uh, foster against opposing winds and voices of retreat. Faced with the insufficiencies of the Monetary and Economic Union, you called for the implementation of a true banking union and the establishment of a budgetary capacity in the Eurozone that would be significant enough with the stabilization function. And Madam Chancellor, I uh, first of all congratulate ourselves for the uh, French-German agreement that was found and that we carried on later on in Europe that we'll have to continue through the uh, coming turbulent times, though through those instruments, this strategy is as indispensable as ever. That courage, dear Mario, meant that you were criticized sometimes 
and that made it even more indispensable. Recently, with the unanimous support of the governing council of the European Central Bank, you uh, called for fiscal policies to fully play their roles in view of the uh, current uh, weakening economic outlook saying that governments with fiscal space should act in a resolute, effective and timely manner. And we can only welcome the courage of the political leader who, within his mandate, managed to overcome political dogmas. It's up to us now, heads of state and government, to carry forward this famous whatever it takes. To match your courage and your foresight, we must be the guardians of what is your legacy. The certainty of the durability of the euro and the need to consolidate it, to turn it into strength for all of our Europe. As for the humility which distinguishes you, it is not alien, I believe, to the Jesuit education you received, drawn from your constant self-critical reflection. This humility led you to constantly recognize the precedence of policy to protect your institution. You have always been careful to keep your decisions strictly within your mandate. Let's not forget that the famous whatever it takes was preceded by within our mandate. It is also this humility and those ethics that were apparent where you had to account for your actions in front of national and European parliamentarians. Finally, Di Maio, allow me to add to those rare qualities a fourth quality which I believe uh, does characterize you even more than the previous three, humanity. In the world of finance and of central banks that may seem distant and cold, this quality maybe sometimes was less perceptible. However, infused with this European humanism, which, like you, was born in Italy, you were always aware of what was most important beyond words and figures, people's lives. They were always your compass, and you did not get lost in the way. You acted for them, for all, for what we call in my country, meaningfully, public interest. This European humanism places you resolutely in the lineage of the great founding fathers and the great minds. This is why, as I was saying, it is a more than a successful mandate as leader of the institution that you are leaving behind today. What you are passing on to us, Di Maio, is the torch of European humanism. By saving the euro, you ensured and fortified the protection of Europe and of its peoples. From now on, this, wa this way that you trace this humanism, which during eight years was uh, seen through your concrete actions, are up to us. And I know that uh, the uh, president-designate Christine Lagarde will uh, take over in a few days, and she knows the place and the importance of this legacy. And I also know the importance that she attaches to uh, independence and to the responsibility that is linked to, uh, uh, to this. And I know that she will uh, make sure that she can also leave her mark in this institution. To answer people's expectations in a fractured and turbulent world, you led the Fight. This fight, you led it throughout your career. So as you are about to take your leave, dear Mario, we are here to promise to you that there will be many of us to continue your conti commitment and we will try to be worthy of it. I know that this institution that you chaired for eight years will be worthy of it because it showed its solidity for all those years and it showed the strength of institutions when Europe is brave enough to create those institutions and to bring forward the European spirit. We owe it to you as we owe it to Europeans. And I also know that you will still be a part of it beyond a well-deserved rest because this humanism lives in you. 
wherever you are, whatever you do, you will be keeping it alive in Europe, for Europe. Thank you. We all thank you.